Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to wrap a stone with macrame and this is just a simple netting technique. So it looks like this. So it's quite a simple technique and you can really wrap any shape and size of stone that you want to. As you can see I've got two very different ones here. This is a much more regular shape and quite large but it's captured in there really nice and safely and then this is a much smaller one but quite regular. You can also get a really nice regular look to your netting then. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do today. So if you want to learn how to do this, then stay tuned. So all we're going to need for this really is the cord itself. And what I'm working with here is a 0.9mm nylon cord. And I'm just using a purple colour because I thought they could nicer with this stone that I'm using. It's just a rose quartz stone. You can use whatever stone and shape and size that you want as well. This technique will fit pretty much anything. And as for the cord as well, you can use many different types of cord and threading material. This is really just to demonstrate with. So let's get the cord that we want to use, and then the stone we want to wrap, and then let's get started. So what we need to do now is cut a cord, and what I have here is four lengths of 70 centimeters each. Now this is just what I'm going to be working with, and also it's more than we need, but I'd rather have too much than too little. How long lengths that you need is going to depend on your project really. Because say with this stone that I'm going to be doing now, it's fairly large. If you were to do a smaller one, a thinner one like this, you definitely don't need this much. So you can really adjust the length of your cords, but rather have too much than too little. So the first thing we need to do is start out with one length of our cords. And then I'm going to fold it over here, put the ends together to find roughly the middle up here and just keep hold of that because then what we need to do now is bring our stone into it because we're going to keep referring back to this as we go and decide what's going to be the bottom and the top here so the bottom is going to be where we're going to start and we're going to end up making the bale at the top at the end so I want mine to sit like this so I want this to be the bottom so what we need to do now is make a loop here at the middle of this cord by making a knot and we basically need to refer back to this to have this sitting around the bottom like that, so it's going to capture that part of the stone so it's not going to be able to fall through. I'll show you what I've already done, I'll show you what I mean. This is kind of got the shape where it has a point on each end, and what you need to do is capture the end so it can't fall through before it comes to the widest part basically. So that's what we need to do here. So I'm going to keep hold of this, and then all we're going to do is make a regular overhand knot. So keep your cords together and pull your ends through and then just bring the knot down and then this way I'm just going to keep referring back to my stone I want to make it a bit smaller here so just take your time get the first loop here the right size and get in there and then just tighten your knot nicely just like that and this is going to be the beginning point and also we're going to attach the other cords that we have. So then to attach those cords, we're going to get one out at a time here. And just put that to the side for now. Get back to the original cord here where you've made that initial loop. And then we need to attach the others evenly distributed around that. And the way that I'm going to do that is again fold this new one in half. Put the ends together so you find the middle up here. And then I'm going to attach this to the original loop with a lax head knot. So put the loop through there and then bring it out and pull the ends through. So it looks like this. And then just tighten it roughly so we get it in the point where they're going to be evenly distributed. It's not too crucial because we can still move these ones around when we attach the others as well. Then grab your next length of cord here, do the same thing. Find the middle by putting the ends together. Again, get it through your original loop there. I like to make sure that I put my cords through from the same side every time. So I come from the bottom every time, just to get a consistent look. Again, get that loop, pull the ends of the same cord through, and tighten it. Like that. And then we just have the one left we need to do. So again, get that cord, do the same thing, find the middle, and then your last space here, get it through to create that loop where you can pull the ends through just like this and tighten it 
and then we have all our loose cords attached together to basically create a starting point. And this is almost evenly distributed already, but this is where you can then just move them around. In this case, I'm using four lengths of cord, so I'm kind of end up ending up with a square here at the bottom. You can just gently move these on the cord till you're completely happy and they look nice and even. And like I said, I'm using four so you kind of get this square. How many you need, you can use more or less than this as well. It really depends on the stone that you want to set. For instance, this one is quite large, that's why I'm using four. Whereas the one that I showed you before, that I've already made, is quite small. And this one I only use three. So here at the bottom we kind of actually get a triangle instead. But it's still the exact same technique, so you can use however many to start out with as you need for your project. So now we need to start building this up around the stone so we can capture it. So I'm going to take it and then just kind of choose which side I want to be outward. It doesn't really matter, but the lax head knots are slightly different from one side to the other one. So it's completely up to you. I'm going to kind of have this be the bottom and then build up around the sides. So I'm also going to take the stone because we're going to keep referencing back to that and measure against it just to make sure we're heading on the right way as we go. So what we need to do now is we have our four corners basically where each one we have two cords coming out from. Now we need to split them up. So we take one, we we'll take this section first, split them up so I have one coming to one side and one to the other side. And then we do the same with this next one over here. So just take kind of two groups at a time and then we need to bring these two together. So we start creating this netting that we need to do. And this is where we also need to then start measuring it against the stone. Because we want to make sure that we don't make these sections too large or too small and that it's going to look as nice as possible as well on the stone. So as even as possible really. So if I kind of hold on to this and bring it together, I'm going to be doing this every time before I make any knots and just hold it against the stone. And then you can kind of get an idea how it's going to look coming up the side there. If you're happy with how that's going to be, I'm going to keep hold of it from the other side. And then again with the ends here, both of them together, just make a regular overhand knot like that and try and keep your cords together so you're tightening them evenly and then bring it down towards where you're holding on to. So you're basically placing your knot exactly where you're holding your cords together because that's where you want it to sit. So something roughly like this and just keep double checking before you completely tighten it. I'm just going to check again against this as well. I'm going to do throughout and just see the evenness of the different spaces that you make. And then I'm going to tighten it completely. And it also helps sometimes to, to pull one of the cords at a time. So just like this. So that's the first one. I'm basically going to keep doing this, moving across all the way around the initial square that we made. So we made that first one. Move over to the next ones. So this is where we still have the one cord out of the pair that we just used. Move to the next one and grab one facing towards that side out of the next one. And just do the same thing. So hold them together. And I also then reference back to the ones I've already made. Because that is already going to give you a good idea of where to place that knot. So keep hold of it. And then make your regular overhand knot. And put it all the way down. I like to kind of keep it outstretched when I'm tightening just to get an idea if it's looking right and sitting in the right place and before I tighten it as well. See if this is going to end up looking alright when it sits on the stone. So like that. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to tighten this completely like that and then keep moving around here and basically just doing the same thing so again take the one you have left out of the one the last pair that you just used move around the square there the original square and then grab one out of the next pair from the next corner and you just keep going like this all the way around try and get your sections here about the same size 
So I've now done all four all the way around there. So as you can see we have the initial square and then kind of a triangle coming out from each side of that square. And you'll also see it's not completely flat. It starts to kind of dome up a bit which is exactly what we want because we need the stone to be inside of that cut kind of thing to then capture it in place. So to continue again I'm going to keep referring back to my stone. I would especially say if it's kind of an uneven shape it's even more important so then because you can determine how it's going to look on the stone as you go as well. So to continue we basically just keep doing the same thing. So we go back to two at a time here. So two pairs. We split them up so we have just one to work with and put one to the other side. So just take the one that's naturally coming towards the middle of these two sections and then we need to make another knot there and also refer back to it again just so you know where to make that knot. So first of all it's going to look nice but also you make sure that it is actually going to capture it in place and not become too big or something so it can slip out depending what you're using. So something like this I'm thinking coming up the side of the stone. So keep hold of that and then again just make a regular overhand knot. And then tighten it all the way down to where you keep your fingers. Tighten it evenly. And before I tighten it completely I'm just going to have a look at it again. Just to make sure it's in the place I want it to be. Pop the stone back in. Just to double check. And obviously we only have this one side of the next level down so it's not that much to compare to yet but just get a rough idea of how it's going to look so I think that's going to be fine I'm going to make sure to tighten it nicely you want to make sure you can tighten your knots really nicely so it's not going to move once you've finished making it and just keep doing this again all the way around for this level take the one that you have left out of that pair that you used and then one out of the next pair. And again bring them to the middle of this section. Hold them together. Refer back and see if it's going to sit nicely compared to the one you just did. So they're roughly the same size, just to make it to make it as even looking as possible going around the stone and up the sides. That's all that really is for. Tighten it, get it all the way down. And then you just want to keep doing this again all the way around do it on this level that we're working with now and then you basically just keep doing this up the stone until you reach towards the top so before I tighten it I'm just going to double check as you can see you're naturally getting this kind of netting shape to capture something within So that looks fine to me also compared to the other one. Tighten it nicely and securely so it's not going to move. And then just keep going all the way around. And you just basically want to keep building this now up the sides of the stone. Whatever you need to do. Like I said with this one, this is quite small and also it's a different shape obviously. You can get this a lot more even than maybe you'll be able to do with an irregular shape one. But this, I only needed a couple of levels. This one is larger, I'll probably need a couple more till I reach the top of it. But then keep doing this the exact same technique all the way up, making it as even as possible. And then when we get towards the top, then I'll show you how we then fasten it completely in place. So I've now continued for a bit, making some more levels there with my knots, making sure I get that netting effect. And what I can just do then, is put the stone back in, like I said, keep referring back to it to make sure you're on the right track. And that first of all, it's holding 
as you're getting further along, but also how it looks, just to double check that. So I'm placing this in, making sure that that original square, in my case, of if, if you're using less, it could be that triangle, or if you're using more, it would be a different shape. Making sure that's right at the bottom, and then we can see we're getting there, we're getting that netting effect. Now I can tell I'm going to need probably about one more layer, and then I should be getting towards the top there. So I'm going to take it back out, and just do another layer, just the exact same way. Pick out my individual cords, one from each side, and then make my next section with that. So again, keep going until you reach that top part, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be my last layer. And then once we get there, then I'll show you how we then finish it all off. So I now made the next level as well, and then I'm just going to pop the stone back in. We have this kind of tube of netting now. So just open it up, get the stone in, just obviously check that everything is how you want it to be, but then basically just to see if it's going to hold nicely, but then also if we need to do any more, if it's going to be nice and secure and also just if it looks nice and even. So there you can see that next level was enough for me to kind of get towards the top of the stone. So all the cords are now coming towards the top there again, and they're going to be collected right there. So this is actually fine for this stone. It's nice and secure. So what we need to do now is basically collect all these up here. And all I'm going to do is make sure that it's sitting how I want it to sit so that the stone is sat nicely within the netting. I'm going to then collect all of these together at the top. This can be a little bit fiddly, but just take your time. And then again with all of them I'm just going to do a regular overhand knot. Get all your cords together there and through. And then just try and keep hold of your knot and all your cords together. And then just gently get it pushed down. So just take your time getting it all the way down to the bottom. So basically right on top of that stone there. Now something that can help a little bit, because this part can be a little bit fiddly, because you need to make sure that when you're tightening the knot, the stone is pushed all the way down. So while the knot is still open, what can help is get something, I'm just using a pencil here, but you can use anything that's not too large. Get it through that knot, and then just use that to help work down towards the stone. So you make sure it gets nice and tight. So that whole netting is going to really capture that stone in place. So take your time. Try and work with all your cords at the same time. And then push them down towards the stone. And then when you're getting closer there, you can just take it out gently. You still have that opening for the actual knot. And then just maneuver it till you're completely happy it's going to be. Stay in place and sit just basically right on top and make sure that it's nice and tight, the netting. So just keep pulling it down as we go. It's getting there. And then we're pulling all the cords tight on top there. So all the loose ones that we had from each previous knot that we did are getting pulled together right at the top. And then once you've made that knot nice and secure, you can obviously make sure you tighten it quite nicely so it's going to stay in place. Then we have it hanging. And then this is how it's going to be hanging. So all that's left to do now is then make a little bale up here so we can actually use it to attach onto a chain or whatever else we want to wear it on. So how I'm going to do that is simply bring this down because I'm going to work with all these cords now so it's facing downwards like this and all we're going to be using is the square knot so if you're not too familiar with macrame knots I have a tutorial that shows how to do some basic knots that might be helpful so what we need to do is pick out two of our cords so one kind of going towards each their own side now this is going to be the front on mine but so just make sure that it's kind of laying with the front facing the way that you want it to be because we're going to make the bale now 
and we're going to start by bringing one of these cords that we took out over all the others. So all the others here in the middle are basically all the holding cords, just acting as one. Bring the other one over that, underneath all of them in the middle, and then up through the loop here. Just like this and tighten it all the way down. Right on top of that previous knot that we made with all the cords. To finish off this square knot, we need to then start with the other side. And then do the same thing, bring this over, underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. And tighten it. And now this is one full square knot. So all we need to do is continue this for a while so we get a section of square knots here that we can then fold back. I've already done it on this one that I showed you before. So you can see I've got a section of square knots that I fold it back and then tightened at the bottom there. So just make a section that's long enough to basically create the size bale that you want it to be. So I've now done my section of square knots there so it's about the size that I want my bale to be. And like I said, you can make it as long or short as you want to. So what I'm going to do is fold this back on itself so it forms a little loop like that. And then the ends down here are going to kind of come back and meet the original knot that we did there. So now what we need to do is fasten it. So I'm going to place it towards the front and then the two cords that I used here to make the square knots with, so the two working cords, I'm going to be using them as well to fasten it. So this can also be a little bit fiddly but just take your time, make sure it's bent back and sitting correctly. So what I'm going to do is make another square knot by incorporating this front side as well. So again, bring your card over, bring the other one over that, and then we need to go all the way around the back of the bale, and then still come up through the loop on this side. So we're still making a square knot, but we're incorporating both all the cards on the back there that we made square knots around before, but then also going around the front. So basically capturing both sides in place and then as we tighten that carefully to make sure it's sitting in the right place it's going to bring the two sides together just like that. You can see you get that loop there and obviously this is just the one half of the square knot and this won't be enough to hold it in place. We need to do a bit more but that's the one half. I'm going to then finish off this square knot to make and make the other half. Again bring it over, bring the other side over that and then all the way around the back of the bale to then come up through that loop. So just like a square knot but just incorporating both sides. Again tighten this so it's going to sit right underneath the previous one. So you end up getting a full square knot here. So like I said it can be a little bit fiddly but just take your time and then what we need to do now, what I like to do is use some glue as well because it won't really hold long term otherwise because we need to get rid of all the excess cord as well obviously. So for that, I'm going to get out my glue. I like using my GS Hyper Cement for this. It dries clear mm -hmm. and then it's also quite strong. So it's not going to be too obvious either. What I'm going to do at the back here, where all these cords are coming out from basically right underneath that last, last square knot that we made, I'm going to put glue around there. So just make sure you get all the cords with the glue and I also like to kind of take them and flip them up and then get kind of some glue on the inside here. We don't need to over saturate it, I just like to make sure that there's glue kind of holding onto everything so nothing can slip out or come undone. So just get some glue in there and then what I'm going to do is actually not leave it to dry because what I want to do before it dries, I want to make another square knot. So again put it to the front towards you because that's how we're making our square knots. And again using these two working cords make one more square knot the exact same way you can see my cords are getting quite short here but we'll manage so I said rather have too much cord as well to begin with than too little because you don't want to risk running out and not be able to finish a piece 
because then now with the glue still wet when I'm tightening this knot on the back here it's going to lie right on top of that glue and basically just melt together a little bit to become more secure because then when that dries it's really going to fasten it together so that's what I'm going to do, finish off this square knot as well and then I'm going to leave it to dry before I then cut anything off so I've now cut off the excess on the back there and then fasten it with another square knot and then all that's left is these little ends of our working cords so again I'm just going to grab a bit of glue and just go around the sides because I just want to make sure that they're going to stay in place as well before I cut them off because it's no good if we cut these off and then it starts coming undone and unraveling so it's just for security really so put a bit of glue here, let it dry and then cut off the excess of these cords as well so I've now cut off all the excess cords there and then here we basically have the finished netted stone and that's how it looks. So it's a pretty simple and easy technique because it's really just knots after knots and then making it fit around the stone. Whatever kind of stone you're working with, like I said, this is more an irregular one, quite a large one, but I did this one as well. That's quite a bit smaller, but a little bit more, well, a lot more regular really. So you can get a more even look. But it works for pretty much any kind of shape that you have and stone obviously as well. So this is how you do this quite simple technique when it comes to it. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to wrap a cabochon or a stone using a macrame technique and this is using the vertical lax head technique. And this is what it looks like. So this is the final result of what I'm going to show you. But you can obviously use this technique for many different shapes and types and sizes of stones or cabochons. This is just to show you the technique. So this is the effect running around the side, it gives a really nice effect and then I've added beads